Okay, we're live on Instagram, we're live on my YouTube channel. Um, Shall we start? Shall we? Yeah, I guess so. What's your name again? I'm Louis, in case you didn't know. This is also, well, you're Louis, but Louis, better known as Fish. Hi guys. And Fish lives with me and many other people (laughs) in this beautiful house. And we are quarantined, this is coming up to two weeks. But thankfully, Fish is an, an amazing chef, so he's going to be teaching us how to make a... What, what are you teaching us today? We're making a coconut curry. Nice. Super excited. Nice. So I'm going to be assisting as much as I can. I'm not very skilled with this, but uh, Fish is the expert, so he'll be uh, teaching you. Yesterday, we posted on Instagram an ingredients list. Some of you may have seen that. And if so, it's probably still on the stories, but if so, we all good? If so, um, get those ingredients ready and you can follow along. And if not, you can take some notes or whatever. I'll probably leave this live stream up on my YouTube channel. Right, Uh, where should we start? Should I start chopping? Should I start helping? Yeah, so over here, got some ginger and garlic and a knife for you. There we go, ginger, garlic. Awesome. And so we're gonna just, Mince that up pretty small. So you can take the side of the blade, mm-hmm. and you can squish your garlic, okay. and then you can go really small. Okay, perfect. And so for those just one at a time, right? Yeah, yeah okay. you can go one at a time. Okay. Um, and for fam- friends and fam at home, uh, garlic and ginger um, are warming, and so it's really good for us in this time of the year, uh, especially as the seasons are changing, when our immune systems are changing. So it's actually really cool to be able to have that. Shall I wash my hands just quickly first? Oh, please. Guys, remember, wash your hands. I have, been, I have been keeping clean hands, but I've also just been playing with my cameras and laptops and phones and stuff, so <laughs> let me just be extra sure and wash my hands. So as I was saying, guys, the, the, the best part about these ingredients is they serve not just the food part, but they're medicinal. Uh, they're medicinal herbs. They help boost the immune system. They help warm the body. Uh, Right now, everyone's feeling a little uh, nervous about health, so we're going to make something that's going to help keep a high immune system. I've I've been doing many things to try and boost my immune system, including a daily ice bath, which I don't don't know if it does, but it it, it helps me feel good. I think it does. I think it's pretty good at getting the body shocked into boosting that immune system. Awesome. So yeah, like I said, follow along if you have if you have ingredients. We probably should have linked the ingredients in the description of the YouTube video, but um, yeah, head, head over to my Instagram and there's a, a list on the stories. It's pretty basic stuff, right? Most people have. Yeah, most of this stuff is things you'd have either in your pantry or you would have gotten uh, just for quarantine. That's kind of the idea behind this, this recipe as well, is it's things you would likely have at your house. So to make a coconut curry, the three major ingredients coconut, uh, the next is tomato, uh, and the third is chickpeas. Uh, together, they make a really rich, protein-filled, fat-filled meal, which is really good to keep you nourished, full of nutrients and vitamins, uh, and also be a nice, warming, flavorful meal. So this curry we're making can feed about four people. So it'd be a pretty, pretty filling meal for a small group of friends or family. So if you're at home, it's a good way to surprise your family. Or if you're alone, you can stockpile it, put it in the yeah, fridge. Yeah, you'll be able to have it for a few days' worth. So we did three large onions. We're doing six cloves of garlic and about two inches of ginger. Um, and that ratio is going to make this flavorful and not too intense. Did you for the did quantity. you peel the ginger? I did. Ah. And for fit people who are wondering, the easiest way to peel ginger is with a spoon. Little do people know, spoons are so much more efficient than a knife or a peeler for peeling ginger because the skin is so thin. So you literally just run the spoon along the ginger. It's really cool. I've got to be honest, I didn't even know you are supposed to peel ginger. You know, you don't have to, but a lot of people prefer it without that little layer of skin. Yeah. I personally don't care. And I think for for the types of foods you're eating, Louis, like yeah. it always go into the same place. Yeah. So I have some other ingredients that are not on the list here. Um, like I made a homemade curry powder. So this is a mix of different things, turmeric, coriander, fenugreek, 
enough just for, for us, just to have these extra flavors. If you guys have them, throw them in there. If not, no worries, it will not affect the recipe. We're gonna try and uh, occasionally glance over the comments and reply, but right now we're just uh, getting all the stuff ready. We had a goal of trying to get this all done and ready to serve at one, which is in probably like 45 minutes, but that's ambitious. We will see. <laughs> So, garlic's kind of sticky. It is. It is. Garlic's also great. It's antifungal, antiseptic. Um, so it's going to be great for the immune system again. So, in your pot, turn your heat on medium. Throw a little coconut oil or some avocado oil. Whatever your house oil is, I tend to avoid cooking with olive oil. I find olive oil to be a little bit, uh, a little bit too gentle. It's a, an oil that requires uh, lower temperatures. I'm going to bring this out here a little bit. And so once your oil is hot, you're going to want to put your onions in. Get those onions simmering. Uh, medium heat. Maybe we can... There you go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've just uh, moved the camera a little bit so you can see what we're cooking. Do, do you want me to chop this up? Yeah, so we're going to cut that into long, thin strips and then into that shape. Okay, okay I'm going to get... You can actually put the garlic in now. Okay. So the garlic... Is, ginger, that, is that minced enough? Do you want me to go with it? Perfect. Okay, perfect. So just for you watching at home. We're try still trying to figure out maybe a double camera live stream where we can have a close up of the food, but until now I'll just show you like this. There's the garlic. Put that in there. And then, same with this, right? Yep. Little two inches of ginger, is that what you said? Yep. Okay. How long have you lived in this house, Fish? I have been a year, coming up on a year. And this is the first time we've done a, a cooking video together. Was our second one? Second. We, did, we did one early on. But we didn't know that we aired it. I think I might have lost it. Because yeah. my hard drive's broke. That's very possible. And so guys, the way I prefer to use coconut milk is in a can, but right now, unfortunately, <laughs> stores are being raided and there's no more canned coconut milk. However, I got some just organic coconut milk and water combo. It'll still do the same thing. Uh, it just has water added, so I don't have to add water to the pot. It's already mixed. Nice. So instead of doing two cups of coconut, two cups of water, I'm just gonna do four cups of this blend. I'd love to know first where you're watching from in the world, and secondly, what your grocery store's looking like right now. Are they empty? Are they still full of produce? Um, I found yesterday that the Whole Foods near us is pretty empty. Uh, I guess people are still stocking up on their food with all this uncertainty right now. Okay, I think, I think I've got the, the ginger. Amazing. How's that looking? Beautiful. That is the exact size and shape we're looking for. Cool. Should I put it in? Yep, go for it. And we'll give it a good stir too. Ginger. I don't know if that counts as minced, I think it's a little bit big, but whatever, chunky. I like chunky. Okay. <laughs> Shall I stir this? Yeah. Check that out. Onions, garlic, and ginger. And so over here, guys, I have a rice cooker going. And in the rice cooker, I put together two cups of basmati rice. rice. Should I spin the camera a little bit? Sure. There you go. And rice you, guys, cooker. you can do this at home in a pot if you don't have a rice cooker or an Instapot or um, a controlled temperature machine. You can do this on the stove top. It takes about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and I just did it's a little rice cooker over there. Two parts water, one part rice. Two parts water. Oh, pork. Are we back? Sorry, I glitched a second then. Um, I'll keep staring this. Is this on a low peak? It's on a medium. Okay. 
And we're going to give this a chance to go translucent. We want the onions to start to come see through a little bit. Nice. For people at home, sweet onions are nice for this. Red onions are nice. I personally avoid using a white onion. White onions are very strong in flavor. We want this to be a more well-rounded dish. Did I get the right onions? You did. You got the right onions. Uh, so, so, I already chopped up some broccoli, which is going to be our green. Uh, it's optional, it's not required, so if right now you guys are having trouble getting greens, then it's totally fine to use like a bag of frozen peas or uh, other frozen veggies. This is a perfect time to use them, they don't have to be fresh. Um, I did just happen to have a head of fresh broccoli. Two cans of chickpeas, comes out to about 28 to 30 ounces of chickpeas. These ones are already cooked, so that's awesome. If you guys have chickpeas... So we could just eat these like this? Yep, they're ready to go. If you guys are using dried chickpeas, which is also popular amongst other parts of the world, or other dried beans, if you don't have chickpeas, other beans will work, uh, you just want to soak them overnight. Put them in some water, put them in a container, throw them in the fridge, let them soak overnight. This lets them get soft enough that when you go to cook them, they'll be really easy to cook. Um, they only need to boil for a couple of minutes, um, so in this case, they're already cooked, so we're going to put them in at the end to let them just simmer with the flavor. And our, our tomatoes. tomatoes. These guys, I did some fresh ones. ones. We, we also have, have some canned ones. ones. For people at home, full will work just fine. Uh, ideally, you want somewhere between 15 to 20 ounces of tomato. Uh, this one is about three medium-sized tomatoes. And in England, we call them tomatoes. Yes. yes. Because tomatoes. Tomato, tomatoes. Tomato, tomato. Welcome to America. <laughs> tomatoes. Or as the rest of the world would say, tomato. Or potato. Yeah, or potato. I don't think anyone says potato. No one says potato. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> how are we looking, Lily? Yeah, how many give you an hour time? Okay. We're how, what what you, what's, what's your estimate, estimate on what, what, what's these ingredients we'll get thrown in, timing-wise? So, in a, maybe in another three, four minutes, we'll be able to throw in the tomatoes, the tomato paste, and our broccoli, and our coconut milk, and we'll start to let it simmer with those flavors. As I mentioned, guys, I have a little blend here, a little spice blend. And this is an opportunity for people at home to get creative. Use spices you really love. Curries are really forgiving. So if you want to put in some chili powder, you want to put in paprika, you want to put in turmeric, cumin, these are all awesome spices that a lot of us have in our pantries that we can just add to this. Literally just the garlic, ginger, coconut, tomato combo is going to be really delicious. So it's, uh, it's a nice opportunity to get experimental. Don't fear the outside rounds of the recipe. Get outside the recipes, people. Okay, one sec. Guys, I'm just going to try and work on the echo. It shouldn't be echoing. It might be. I can't think why it's echoing. The volume's down on here, right? Maybe that's. Maybe that's not. Yeah. Oh, is, it, is it still sound, sounding super echoey? I mean, we are in a kitchen, so it's going to be a bit echoey. Really, would you give that pot a stir for me? Yeah. So, really, I'm going to ask you on a scale of 1 to 10, how often do you cook? Oh, that's a funny scale. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't, since Fish moved in, I haven't really been cooking. I tried a little bit when we first moved into the house, but, um, you know, Fish just loves cooking so much, and uh, I think I would like to cook more. I just, I need to find, I think I would need to find that passion for it. So, maybe this is the time whilst we're trapped inside. And I cook for all of us. Yeah. So, I probably twice. cook twice a day. Maybe three times, depending on the day. But I also like to cook, so for me it's like, it's more than just functional, it's not just a practical activity. It's, mm. it's art, it's science, it's spirituality, all wrapped up in one package, so. 
I'm just going to go and check upstairs in the board here and see what it's sounding like for me. So guys, these onions are starting to get a little translucent. What that means is they get starting to get see-through. You can see here, they're starting to get that nice, clear look and feel. And the smell is really aromatic. It's really strong. Uh, you're starting to smell the ginger and the garlic pretty powerfully. So uh, if, if that's the point where you're ready to put in the other ingredients. How's it sound? It's like a double audio recording going out. I'm just trying to figure out what that is. It might be because I've attached two of these things. So let's, let's see what happens if I delete that. Is that better? Yeah, I think that might fix it. Hello, hello. I'll tell you upstairs. Okay, well, guys, I think I might have resolved the, uh, the audio problem. Okay. So we're gonna add that guy in. We have some tomatoes. <laughs> gonna put those in. And then next, we're gonna do half of this. Half of this? Yep. So this is some tomato paste. So for you guys at home, about three to four tablespoons of tomato paste is perfect. That's a whole can, that entire thing, so that amount that Louis is doing is the equivalent of three to four tablespoons. Um, in, in the UK, I think we call this tomato puree. Interesting. Yeah, which is, I'm guessing, is a French word, right? We, puree? We, yeah. We, uh, we, we steal a lot of French words. Same with um, eggplants, we called aubergines. I'm guessing I'm stirring this all in. Yep. yep. I'm going to do a two, two little spoons of this guy. This is our spice blend. Um, can I check, guys? Is the audio sounding better? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, we, we resolved the audio problem. Um, guys, thanks for bearing with me. This is my first live stream away from my other computer, so I had to like scramble for 15 minutes trying to figure it all out, so I think we've got it solved now. And lastly but not least, we put broccoli in. Broccoli? Yeah. Broccoli. And as I said guys, if you don't have broccoli and you don't have any other greens, that's totally okay. This food will be still amazing without it. But if you'd like to add a green element, this is a good point to put it in. Let it start to cook down with the other ingredients. We can turn the pot up to high now, mm -hmm. and we'll add our coconut milk. Nice. So if you guys are doing coconut milk from I'm a just, can... I'm just going to show you guys what it's looking like so far. Awesome. Check that out. Nice. Maybe I should bring this one in a bit more now that we've... Is all the ingredients in the pan? Everything except for the chickpeas and our basil and herbs, okay. which we're going to put in last, but... Uh, oh. Okay. We haven't got a camera guy, so I'm just going to be moving the, moving the cameras around. You're our camera guy, Louie. Sweet. How's the smell? It smells pretty good. Mm. So now, once the pot is on high, we're going to keep an eye on it because we want it to bring all of the liquid now that's been added to it to a simmer. Do we, do we put this on or is this not necessary? We're only going to put that on when we're done to just keep it warm. Okay, cool. For now, we want to start letting the veggies to absorb some of the liquid. I'll get those broccolis under. Yeah. I might even add a little bit more coconut milk. And guys, if you are not having enough coconut milk at home, using water is also fine. Coconut's just fatty, it adds a nice flavor. It's also good for you. Is it possible to substitute with other plant milks, like yeah, almond yeah. milk? Or? I personally would avoid the nut milks besides coconut, but oat milk is really good. Hemp milk is really good for this type of recipe. Okay. Um, some people will make their own, like, peanut milk and make this into a Thai version of like a peanut curry. How do you make peanut milk? Uh, same process. You have process. to milk the peanuts. Yeah, yeah. It's a tiny little peanut cat. <laughs> For those vegan fat family out there. It's looking awesome. good. So guys, um, over the next few weeks, Fish is going to be uploading more into his Instagram, some little cooking recipes and videos and stuff, which I'm going to be helping him with. So if you want to go and follow him on Instagram, I've linked it in the description on YouTube, or hmm, you just need to go over on Instagram after this 
Well, maybe we'll do a little post in the Social Good Club, but um, Fish at Fish Makes, right? Yep. He makes things. He makes things. He's an amazing artist and photographer as well. But um, yeah, I think you'll be delighted by his culinary exciting recipes he's going to be uploading. Um, he's been making incredible meals every day and I'm just blown away. I feel like, oh we did a little photo shoot last night. What did we cook last night? What did you cook last night? It was like a night? soup, wasn't it? Yeah, last night was an Italian wedding soup Ooh. with a cheesy pasta on top. Mm. Yeah. So experimental quarantine cuisines. Yeah, if you wanna if you if you're looking for new cooking ideas and wanna get adventurous in the kitchen, head over and follow him. So now we're gonna give it a chance to, to simmer, so we're gonna leave, leave it be for a second and see if the bubbles start to form. And once the bubbles start to okay. form, yeah, once we get a nice little bubble going around the whole pot, that's when we add our chickpeas in. Okay. And uh, and then we'll add our herbs and we'll be ready to let it sit and finish. Nice. And how's the rice coming along? Rice is done. Yeah. Rice is all ready. We can show people. Check this out. Nice. Got ourselves a beautiful basmati rice. And you were you were saying having a rice cooker is really convenient, right? It's helpful because I don't have to think about it. Um, but it does the exact same thing as rice in a pot. So again, keep it simple. Rice, water, salt. Right, I think we might be ready. Here we go. For the chickpeas. What do you guys think? It's chickpea time. It is chickpea time. Okay, so I just chuck them all in. Chuck them all in. Give it a stir. We'll add our herbs as well. Nice. And wait, what are these? So that was the, the basil. Spring onions. Basil and spring onions. Basil. Yeah, and, and for spring people onion. at home, spring onions, green onions. Same, same. What's the difference between chives and spring onions? Uh, chive is an herb also in the onion family. It's a, it's a tuber. Am so I chucking it all out? Yeah, yeah, the whole, whole family. And uh, yeah, they, they all have different flavor profiles, but they're all in the onion family. Nice. I do love chives. <laughs> and leeks in the onion family? Yep. And garlic is too, I love, actually. I love leeks. Leeks are amazing. Until it like, gets on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So now we're going to let that sit. We're going to lower it back down to low heat to simmer. And now, for people at home, you can put the lid on if you want it to remain more soupy. But if you'd like it to become less liquid and more chunky, then you can put the lid off to the side and let it evaporate some of the heat. That will allow some of the liquid to disappear and it'll soak up all the liquid. If you want to keep it more soupy again, you can throw the lid on it. Um, I think we're going to leave the lid on so we have yeah. more liquid Yeah, because we're doing it with rice. Uh, and guys, for people at home, if you're, if you're feeling like putting on a timer, I would say a good 10 minutes is just enough time for this. You should see the collection of timers we have behind here. We have a lot of timers. There's so many and they're like magnetic. I like it, very efficient. It is. So the plan is, guys, after this live stream, uh, in about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, we are gonna move over to the Social Good Club YouTube channel, and we're gonna sit down, eat food, invite some other creator friends of mine in on a Zoom call, and then, um, yeah, just chat about uh, what we're doing to kind of be together right now in this confusing, crazy time we're in um, and one of those things that we thought would be cool today to do would just be to kind of trying to like eat together like even if we're not physically with each other there's something really beautiful about coming together and eating and break bread yeah we we had an amazing wait is it friday today today is friday so we we had um so fish has been hosting shabbat dinners at our house and that do you want to explain what a shabbat dinner is for people that don't know jewish jewish customs yeah yeah oh look we got a Oh, poor connection. So, for people who've never experienced Shabbat or Sabbath, uh, it's an opportunity to relax, stop working, slow down, connect with friends. It's a break from your regular week. It's a break from routine. To just enjoy the company of other people, to maybe do self-study, and to just be really present to what's right in front of you. Mm. So, we, so we've been doing them. I think our Instagram's cutting out a little bit, I'm sorry. 
Um, we've been doing them every, um, on most Fridays, and it's been amazing just, up until a couple of weeks ago, we were having friends over every Friday, and then last Friday we did just a little Zoom call with some of you guys watching. Yeah, virtual Shabbat. It was a virtual Shabbat, and it was really nice, and even though we weren't physically together, I love that technology allows us to kind of we have like connect. four continents in the room. Yeah, it was amazing. There's like we did it. It was late evening in LA, so we had a lot of people tuning in from India. It's like the morning in India. Yeah. A few other people from the US, and then people in Europe. And it was just in Australia. Yeah, Australia. It was it was so amazing. And I just and a few other people were eating at the same time, and we were just chatting together, and it felt like kind of like people were in the room with us, which I'm just so glad that we have that for the people that do have access to technology to to um, connect like that right now, which I'm assuming you guys do because you're watching us. Um, but yeah, so I thought after this, we'll just kind of connect in, see how other people are feeling right now and just, yeah, just chat more about how we can support one another and be a community, even if we physically can't be hanging out with loads of people right now. Um, yeah, should we see what, People are doing online what they're asking. Someone said, can they add blue cheese in it? Uh, you could. Uh, I don't know if it would make it more flavorful or it would add a flavor that might take away from it. But hey, again, experiment. Do whatever your heart's telling you to do. Yeah, blue. I'm not a big fan of blue cheese. I mean, I don't eat... Can you get vegan blue cheese? I don't know. I'm colorblind and I'm vegan, <laughs> so like blue and cheese already are two things I'm not super excited about. Yeah. But yeah, be uh, be experimental. Why yeah. not? What people saying on Instagram? Explain the peanut milk, please. I think people want to know <laughs> about the peanut milk. Do you do you squish them? Do you blend them? So the same. That would make peanut butter though, wouldn't it? Yeah, so the, the same way you would make almond milk yeah. um, is soaked and sieved and then blended and then sieved again. Mm. So you're using something like a cheesecloth to basically soak and extract the water that has been with the peanuts. And you're just removing all the fiber and the pulp. Oh. Okay. Um, it's not as popular, mostly because peanuts are cherished for their protein. Yeah. So people want the fiber, they want the pulp. Um, but you can, for all intents and purposes, you can make a peanut milk. But no one out there is selling peanut milk. So if you go ahead and make peanut milk, you might have a whole new market on your hands. Be careful, you might become the next guy. Yeah. Or girl, the peanut person. <laughs> the peanut person. Um, I'd love in this, whilst you're waiting for this to as well, Fish, for you to share, I don't know, like your passion for food, your passion for community, anything you're feeling in this moment right now as well. I mean, we can chat more on the other, on the phase two of the live stream, but totally. whilst you're waiting, it might be cool just to, just to chat and just see what's, for people that are like, maybe wanting to get more into cooking themselves now that they have more time at home. Yeah. I'd love to hear a bit of your kind of journey and how you got excited about cooking. Totally. I'm, I'm really fortunate. I mean, one of the lucky ones who, I grew up with a family that really loved food. Uh, I grew up with, with parents who are chefs. And so I'm learning now what it's like to have a relationship with food that is personal and intimate and um, experimental. Uh, I have been vegan now for over 10 years, 11 years this year. And in the beginning, it was really hard mm. because no restaurants catered to my diet where I was living and all my friends were, you know, omnivorous or they kind of thought I was doing something silly, they treated it like a joke. Uh, and so no one really went out of their way to give me a, a wide experience. No one said like, ah, oh, these are all your options for you new vegan person. Uh, but I kind of took it on myself to go, what would it look like if I tried to make all of my favorite foods but vegan? So everything from dumplings to spare ribs to cheeseburgers, and tacos and all these things and so uh, I just took time to really sit with different ingredients and different food um, and it took a couple of years to feel really confident but in the beginning the big nugget of inspiration came from my dad he was like worst case scenario you don't like how it tastes you make something else so that stops you having a fear of failing in the kitchen yeah because 
it's not the end of the world. You know, yeah. there's there's other there's other dishes to make. There's other people to to ask questions to, to share with. And that was one of the big things too that really inspired me and got me out of my own way was cooking for other people, not just for myself. Mm -hmm. When I started to cook for friends, the momentum built rather quickly. Um, I'm fortunate because I have a background in food. I grew up cooking with my parents. And because of that, I have a lot of knowledge about kitchen skills and knife skills and cook times and different ingredient profiles. But all of that aside, everything that you can need is right here online. So yeah. really, if you're feeling um, the urge to learn more or the desire to cook more, just start. Just pull up a couple of recipes that are family favorites or things you're inspired by. I know there's a couple of Instagrammers um, that are just literally giving all of their recipes away for free right now because people are stuck at home. So keep your eye out. If you're really excited, just start experimenting. Um, and I think I, I mentioned a little bit earlier is food is not just sustenance. It's art, it's science, it's spirituality. Every time I get in front of this board, it's like going to a yoga mat. Every time I do this, it's like I'm entering a practice that I don't have any expectations. I just want to get out there and do it and just make something because just by doing this one little thing, my entire skill set is being advanced every single time. Even if this is not the most revolutionary meal, even if I'm not doing something completely new, it's still improving my skill set just by doing it. And so that's why I have no issue cooking all the time too. It's because mm -hmm. in the back of my head, I'm aware that the second I get on this cutting board and I start working, I'm practicing, I'm getting better whether I can see it immediately or not. Um, yeah, and that feels really good. Awesome. Yeah, and there's something amazing about like, when you're saying like you're cooking for other people and that's something that excited you. And this, I, we haven't over the last year been very close to our next door neighbors, but um, yesterday uh, the guy messaged me, Sean, and was like, oh, do you have any cornmeal we could borrow? And then I grabbed some from Whole Foods for him and then he was cooking some um, buffalo cauliflower and then he gave me some over the fence to taste and it's like this really amazing moment. I was like, wow, I think in this time, especially for people that do cook and know how to cook, maybe cooking for others and ask, dropping a few notes around your neighbor's door, especially elderly and people that can't get out to get the groceries they need, um, maybe this is a time to share food together as well. I mean, obviously there's the hygiene aspect and keeping clean and washing your hands and stuff, but I think, um, it's nice that we've got already a community of people in this house and able to cook together. Um, it must be hard for people completely isolated right now um, when you haven't got that kind of community around. But then again, that's why I think there's opportunities to have these virtual meals together. And it's a common ground. Everyone eats. Yeah. You know, that's, that's something that we could all agree is valuable to us, is meaningful. Mm. You know, not only do we all eat, but we're putting something in our bodies. It's, it's, for all intents and purposes, it's becoming a part of us. Mm -hmm. And so if I make something and I put my heart and soul and my love into it, even if it's not the best thing I've ever made, at least I tried, that love and that intention is now in that food and that person's gonna eat that and it becomes a part of them. That's so cool. That's a really neat way of being able to share something with someone. Yeah, yeah. And I feel, I definitely feel that like, this year, since fish has moved in, I think it's like by far the healthiest I've ever eaten. Well, so speaking of healthy you. eating, yeah. my, my pleasure. Uh, that's our 10 minute timer. Okay. It's a good chance now to check our curry. How are we doing on time? Yeah, this is kind of looking good. So guys, I don't know if you can see, but our curry, well, let's hold it on. The flavors now are all starting to bind because all the ingredients are starting to get a little bit softer. The chickpeas are starting to pop open. Nice. And uh, I can tell just by the smell of it. Oh yeah, it's a, it, the smell's got way richer. Way richer. Yeah. Uh, and the, another good way to tell if you're using something like broccoli or a more firm vegetable, if you just press it up against the side of the pot and see if it's soft, that's a good sign that the veggies are probably almost done. Have we added any spice to this yet? We haven't added any spicy spices, but we did add some of our, our curry blend here. Oh, okay. And uh, for people at home, red chilies or cayenne pepper 
It's a great seasoning to add to this if you want to give it a little kick. In our house, we have a range of tolerances towards spice. I'm probably at the high end of loving the spiciest, and a few of us are, and then Raya doesn't enjoy spice as much. So we typically make the main dish with the ability to add spice afterwards. Yeah, so I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle. So yeah. I'm like, I'm, I don't love too much spice, but I need a little something something to get it going. Yeah, I think I get a real kick off the adrenaline rush of like, kind of the, the really spicy stuff but yeah it can it can be a bit too much sometimes you like a bunch of miniature little guys in the motocross bike I, I always like the yeah I always like the challenge of the spicy stuff yeah I've never done, done a ghost chili though I don't think I'm going to do one now yeah I don't think that's necessary nah, it's not going to add anything that's unnecessary. to your life <laughs> so for you guys at home uh, this is a good point uh, where if you want you could turn off the heat and let it just sit and, uh, and finish kind of ruminating in its spices Mm -hmm. um, if you want to get it a little bit softer, go ahead, a couple more minutes. But for us, I think we're, we're pretty much done and ready. Yeah, should we serve, a couple, yeah, serve up a couple of dishes? a couple of plates. Fantastic. Um, so, we can use a ladle for this guy. Okay. Should we get some, some bowls from the... From the... Are you feeling hungry? I'm going to oh, do, we're gonna small, do those ones. Yeah, okay, do I can always come back for a second. Yeah, that's great. Shall I message people to tell them lunch is ready? Yeah, that's a great idea. Hmm, my phone is busy right now. I'll message them. Okay. Guys, if, if any, anyone that lives in this house is watching the live stream, dinner's ready. I'm I almost forgot. Ready. I almost forgot one ingredient, really. Ooh! My super secret special ingredient, which isn't a secret now because we put it on the live stream. But when I make this for friends, I don't tell them that I put this in there. Oh, maple syrup. Yeah. Oh, naughty. So maple syrup. So here's something interesting with Indian cuisine. A lot of curries um, and masalas have um, a flavor profile where they touch every single type of flavor. So it's sweet, sour, spicy, tangy, savory. Um, and they really try to go in. And so I'm adding the equivalent of three tablespoons Whoa. of maple syrup. Nice. And feel free to stir that up. That's going to add a nice sweet element. Mm. Guys, if anyone has followed this recipe whilst either in real time, like if you've been in your kitchen cooking this with us, or if you're planning to make this after you've watched this, um, yeah, the Instagram live will be live It'll be up for 24 hours and then I'm probably going to leave this video live on my YouTube channel as well. But I'd love to see, uh, uh, maybe you could tag us in a, in a photo of your creations and maybe tag the Social Good Club and maybe tag Fish. Yeah, let us see what on you On Instagram, and we'd, um, yeah, we'll repost a couple of people's that have, have followed along. Okay, I think it's all steady. Awesome. All right, so let's do curry first and we'll do rice second. Ooh, controversial. I know. I just, you wouldn't put rice underneath. See, I like the visual of the of rice, rice on top. Oh, okay, okay. We're gonna make it look really pretty, Lee. Yeah, okay, let's do this. We should do some photos of this as well. Yeah, we for sure. Should I, should I, is this a good amount? Is that one scoop or two? That's one. Let's do like two scoops. Okay. Cream scoop for the rice. No, I just used the. This is called a rice spoon or a rice palette. It's a really great tool to have with your rice, but it does look like an ice cream scoop. <laughs> is this ready or are we gonna? That was ready. We can put a little sprig of basil on it. Would you like to do that? Maybe, yeah. Do you want to do, need to do anything special? No, you just peel, pick one leaf off and throw it on top. Ooh, like that. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna stick it in. No, maybe not. Just on the side there. Yeah, pretty. And these are white sesame seeds. They add like a little nutty flavor. Sorry, I was a little bit clumsy when I was serving. 
You are allowed to be. <laughs> There's no rules. Here, scoop these two. How does this look, guys? How does it look from home? I was going to say that people might not be home, but I think literally everyone from wherever you're watching is at home right now. <laughs> I'm guessing. There's just no way you could be anywhere else, right? Unless you're in a lunch break from a, an important job, that a critical, what do they call them? Essential job? Yeah. Essential. Guys, if anyone watching is a health worker right now, I just want to yeah. take my hat off to you. Yeah, thanks guys. I and really just say, it. yeah, thanks so much for um, being in this field of work, which must be incredibly challenging and draining right now. And um, I can't even imagine. Anyone actually, anyone that's kind of on the front lines in this situation, thanks a lot. Oh, all right. What are we looking at time-wise? 53. Okay, I think, I think what we're going to do, I'm trying to think how to transition over to the other live stream. Maybe we'll stay live on Instagram until we start the next live stream. I'm going to have to finish the YouTube stream to move my camera upstairs. But before I do, I'm just going to show you a little close-up of these. See if I can do this. Let me see if I can take the camera off without it unplugging. Ooh. Whoa, this is crazy. Live stream vlogging with a with a camera. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we are. These are the, the final dishes. Ready? Looking good. You should do a straight down on this guy, right? That's the sexy one. Yeah. Oh, straight down. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's a bit of a shadow, but you can you can see. I'm gonna put this back over here. Oh. Um, as you saw, that seemed to me like a pretty simple to make meal. Oh, I don't so easy. Yeah, I don't think that was incredibly challenging like I feel like I could follow that recipe pretty easy there's nothing I don't think you could go wrong really other than maybe overcooking the rice or something yeah and a lot of people overcomplicate things I think it is a lot simpler than people give it credit yeah so I'm just adding a little bit of salt and pepper now nice just a little bit to taste a little dash guys I'm gonna do the taste test over on this Social Good Club channel live stream, which I'm going to do in my office now. Me and Fish are going to go up there, and, and uh, are you going to join us for a little bit? Yeah, cool. You guys ready? Yeah, right. Um, I'm going to end this stream. Thanks for joining us, guys. Like I said, um, please post any images of what you've made and tag us. And also um, go and follow Fish on Instagram. And then, like I said, as well, if you want to join for the next phase, the next 